Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna to be reviewing the new Toyota Grand Highlander. Before we get in this video, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry Miller Toyota here in Murray, Utah for giving me some time with this Grand Highlander. I'm going to include a link to the website in the description down below so you can check out what they have currently. And then on a side note, if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a turbocharged 2.4 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 21 around town and then 27 on the highway with power outputs being 265 horsepower and then 310 pound feet of torque. Now, before I move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So, starting with the hood, you guys can see it's flat there in the center and then kind of falls off on either side, but then raises again a little bit. And then we have this really cool light design, and this kind of looks like a mustache in a sense. <laughs> um, and you guys can see the grill. You can imagine that would be the uh, mouth down below. But yeah, really big grill. And putting it all together, I guess the front end of the Grand Highlander is quite grand indeed. Now around the side here, our tire wheel setup is 255, 65, 18 in the front and over in the rear. And you can see with the wheels, you got this silver there. And then notice with the fender flares and the rest of the body work there on the side, we also have some splash guards. And then we've got some silver trim there at the bottom of the windows or chrome rather. And then here is your full side view with the Grand Highlander. Now here's a quick look at the key fob. We have our lock and unlock function opening for the hatch and then Grand Highlander logo there and we'll pop her open. Now behind the third row of the Grand Highlander, you have a decent amount of cargo space. If you need more space, you can just throw down the seats. You can pull them back up with the straps to make that system pretty easy to use. But yeah, definitely more spacious than the regular Highlander. And when you're all done, just press that button and that will lower the hatch right back down. Now here's a quick look at the taillights, and then you guys can see Grand Highlander right there. It's kind of hard to see with the print below the Toyota logo, um, but yeah. And putting it all together, let me know what you guys think about the looks here with the Grand Highlander. Now taking a look at the door panel here in the back, you guys can see sunshade here for the rear passengers, and we've got soft touch down below, and then plenty of storage. Now in the third row, this would be best for kids, um, but I do fit back here. We've got a USB here in the back. We've got cup holders as well. We actually have um, an armrest, but even though it looks like it's padded, it's not really all that padded. But what I will say is these seats do look nice, perforated all down the center. Uh, and then headroom back here, pretty good. And legroom here in the second row is really good. We've got a little storage pocket. We've got our own climate zone here in the back, more USBs, by the way, down there as well. And then look at these seats, by the way, perforated all down the center, just like the third row. And then headroom back here, it's a little bit better, actually. Now, take a look at the front door panel. You guys can see soft touch here at the top and then also down below. We've got all of our window controls here, mirror adjustments. There's a quick look at the mirrors themselves. And then here's the front seat again, perforated all down the center portion. Power adjustments here on the side. And you can see this to open up the hatch. Now taking a look at the steering wheel, soft touch all around. And then we have practical controls in the front for like our adaptive cruise control, steering assist, volume, voice command controls as well. And then you got your regular stocks here on the back. Now taking a look at the gauge cluster itself, um, we can scroll through a bunch of different menus, see different bits of info here on the Grand Highlander. And then we do have a bunch of different drive modes that we can go between as well for both on-road and off-road use. Now in reverse, we just have a regular backup camera here, trajectory lines turn with the steering wheel. And then as for the rest of the infotainment system, shortcut bar here on the side responds pretty quickly, as you can see. Um, easy to use and pretty big infotainment system overall. Got an analog volume control right there and then climate controls just down below. They make everything pretty easy to use. Also, we do have heated seats. So parts of the dash are soft touch here, like the center too. And we have a little storage area and then another USB. They love USBs in this. And there's another one right there and another one. It's like they're growing. They're breeding. Anyways, we've got some wireless phone charging pad stuff happening right there. Engine stop start button shifter for the eight speed automatic transmission. And then you got a bunch of storage here. It looks like this. It looks like it's removable, but I also don't want to break anything, but it also looks like it's removable. Anyways, parking brake, auto hold, auto stop starts, and then you can see stability control and then your drive mode select is this kind of weird button thing. Got a snow mode too, as well as hill descent control. And then the center console in this is very interesting. Obviously you got the padding here for the armrest, but it's just, yeah, the, the opening function is strange. Almost forgot, glove box. Yeah, pretty big with the size. Um, and then we do have a panoramic center up top. 
So quite a bit of glare, so it's kind of hard to see the window sticker, but total MSRP 48272 and let's see how the Grand Highlander drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood, both the mirrors, do a blind spot wandering, throughout the rest of the rear. And let us set off in the Grand Highlander. The Highlander, but grander, right? So this is my first, I guess I'll call it official drive in the Grand Highlander because the first time I drove Grand Highlander, I didn't really get to go too far with it. So yeah, we'll see how this performs with uh, more of a real real drive I suppose so first off it'll be interesting to also see how this turbocharged engine performs in this I just drove a Lexus RX the other day that has the same engine more power though is claimed by that so that's 265 with the Lexus it says 275 and then torque is 310 with this and with the Lexus it says 317 so <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know if there's actually a real difference other than what they state on paper. Moves pretty well. It sends more power to the front. Interesting. Interesting. That's for sure. It's very smooth though. It's definitely a comfortable ride. Seats are comfortable too. Heated function works very nice. Yeah, I like how this drives. I'm not noticing a huge difference though between this and the regular Highlander, to be honest. But it does drive well. Yeah, that torque is good. We're in the sport mode here. And we're gonna get our acceleration, so slowly through the puddle first. Okay, now we'll get an acceleration here. Woo! Still sending most of the power to the front. Very interesting, even in the sport mode. It's it's still front wheel biased. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So to sum things up with the Highlander, but more grand, right? Um, I like how this drives. I think it drives, I think it drives really well. It's comfortable. Uh, this turbocharged engine does well at elevation. It's got good. It's got good power for what it is. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I'm kind of. I think it's interesting that it's more front-wheel drive biased with the power delivery. I think that's interesting. No complaints about that. Just interesting. Um, but overall, yeah, I, I like how this. I like how this drives. And I guess again, if you just if you like the Highlander, but you need. A little bit more space than what the Highlander provides then that's what the Grand Highlander is for that's why they made the Grand Highlander I suppose I do think though Toyota has gotten to the point where they probably have too many SUVs again because I mean look at this way so the crown even though they don't really call that an SUV it's kind of an SUV now because of yeah so anyways we've got the do they even still do the chr i haven't seen a chr in a while they still have the chr so we got the chr and then then you've got the rav4 then you've got the highlander grand highlander forerunner land cruiser you've got the crown if you count that as an suv sequoia and so like <laughs> i understand that everyone's buying suvs nowadays but they've got so many they've got a lot of crossover with their crossovers i guess but anyways let me know what you guys think about the Grand Highlander, and do you think this is worth getting over the regular Highlander?